Welcome to Rethink, the podcast that empowers you to challenge your existing beliefs and embrace new, more productive ways of thinking. Here at Rethink, we believe that the key to self-fulfillment lies in shattering old thought patterns and adopting new mindsets that support personal growth and empowerment. With expert guests and thought leaders from a wide range of fields, we explore strategies and insights that can help you achieve success and fulfillment in all areas of your life. From relationships to career, business ownership, and health, you are the source of your own success. We're just here to help you tap into your true potential and create a brighter future. So join us on the journey of personal growth and empowerment, and let's rethink what's possible for our lives. Diet soda. Is it helping or hurting? That's what we're talking about today on Things You Should Know. Stick around. The Things You Should Know podcast is our pleasure to welcome you each and every week. Some of the topics that we discuss on this podcast range from tech to innovation, health and wellness to, yes, unsolved mysteries and crimes. You picked a great day to join us. We've got a great podcast ahead for you. Sit back, relax, listen, and enjoy. Thank you for joining us at Things You Should Know podcast. Hey, you. Yes, you. You're listening to Things You Should Know podcast. You like it? You like to hear more? Well, great. Would you like to know two different ways that you can support the podcast? All you got to do is when you're done listening to this podcast, go down into the notes, the show notes. There are two links there. Either one. Check them out. Thanks again. Have a great day. It's about one in five Americans who drink diet soda every day. This is according to the CDC, the Center of Disease Control here in the States. Is this a good thing? A bad thing? Do we know? Numerous studies over the past several years have reported links between diet soda and weight gain and diabetes and yes, heart problems and a multitude of other health issues. But most recently, there have been headlines, alarming headlines, about a higher chance of dementia and stroke among diet soda drinkers. Now, that may sound worrisome to you, but experts say that you don't need to clear the diet uh, soda drinks out of your fridge just yet. There are a lot of questions, and today we're going to try to provide you with some clarity in the form of some answers. I do know a lot of people are health conscious and they move away from drinking the actual soda to a diet form of that particular soda uh, with the hopes uh, that they are doing something, a more healthier choice for their life. Well, today, guys, we're going to jump into this topic and see what we can uh, shed light on that can help you. Maybe you are a soda drinker. Maybe you are a diet soda drinker. And maybe you think that that is uh, your best option and that you're okay. But we're going to go with some studies today that may point you in a little different direction. So welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to Things You Should Know. Uh, My name is Kelly. Uh, I'm your host. And as always, it's my pleasure to welcome you in. Uh, We've got a pretty rich topic today. And I hope uh, we'll bring some information to light that's going to help you make an educated decision moving forward. As it relates to your health, your health is very, very important. Before we get started, as always, I'd like to thank thank the first timers. If they're in the first timers here, welcome aboard. Uh, We're glad to have you. Please go ahead now and subscribe to Things You Should Know podcast so that you don't forget who we are and where we are. We're in our second season. This is show number 19. So you've got 18 other shows to listen to and a whole full year of, I think we did 110 shows in year one. So quite a few shows that you can binge on. 
uh, get get going with that. Listen to this one first. Our uh, core guys and ladies, thank you for coming back. You've supported the podcast day after day, week after week, and you many of you have been with us since day one. So thank you so much. We have a new element to the podcast because we want to hear your voices. We want to hear from you. You guys are hearing me all the time. I like to hear from you. We have a voicemail uh, app uh, link, whatever we want to call it, that you can click on in our show notes. And it will take you to a website where you can just leave us a, a, a voicemail and whatever you like to say, it'd be great. Mostly we're looking for folks that we can put in our intros and our exes. Uh, that is to say our show intro and our show exes. So if there's a particular episode that you love, a particular thing about the podcast that you like, or just some kind of word that you would like to uh, put out to encourage me, if folks heard the podcast or even other listeners, please feel free to use that voicemail uh, application to do that. And what will happen is uh, you'll link out from the show notes, no matter what device you're using, your cell phone, your laptop, your iPad, it doesn't matter. And you can record directly from there, directly from your device, and it will come to our email box. It is so easy. So I'm encouraging you, all of you, to please leave us a voicemail, uh, some nice note uh, that encourages us to continue on with Things You Should Know podcast. We're looking forward to getting it. All right, guys, so let's get back into it. Diet soda. Who's drinking diet soda and why? Most of the time, uh, uh, people who drink diet soda uh, believe that this is a healthier choice as opposed to the actual full version, we'll call it, of this of the uh, beverage. So whether it's Coke, Pepsi, Mountain Dew, it doesn't really matter. We know that these uh, beverages have an enormous amount of calories in them. And if you're brave enough, if you're brave enough to read the ingredients, you'll also become aware that there are some things that we're putting into our body that more than likely, not more than likely, let's be honest, that we shouldn't be putting into our bodies. Okay. So how do we lessen the impact? Many of us, we say, well, I'll drink the diet soda. It'd be less sugar, less bad stuff. And how can a diet soda not be good for you. Well, let's see what the experts say. So at Boston University, researcher Matthew Pace, P-A-S-E, Ph.D., and some of his colleagues examined 10 years of health information from nearly 3,000 American adults, over 45, to count the number of folks who had a stroke. And they did the same for nearly 1,500 American adults over 60 to determine how many developed dementia. Of course, these are folks who, you know, were drinking diet, diet soda. Now, after accounting for a variety of things that they could influence, you know, their health, such as age, physical activity, uh, waist size, the researchers found that diet soda drinkers nearly tripled their odds of a stroke or dementia compared to those who did not drink diet soda. Now, that may sound scary. It's not necessarily according to pace because only 81 and we're saying only 81, but in my opinion, one is a lot, but only 81, which is 5% of 3000 of the people in the study were diagnosed with dementia. And then in regard to stroke, there were 97, which is equates to 3% of that number uh, had a stroke. Okay. So, quote, at the end of the day, we're talking about small numbers of people, says pace. I don't think that the people should be alarmed. Well, that's going to be left up to you. Pace also makes clear that the study results published in April in the journal Stroke don't explain the link. It doesn't explain the link between the stroke and the supposed uh, indicator or prime indicator, which would be the diet soda. So diet sodas cause health problems like stroke and dementia. That's a question mark. Or do people who have higher chances of getting such health problems choose to drink diet soda? perhaps to try to cut out the sugar and the calories in their diets. So he's, he's presupposing because there's no official link. Of course, there are a number of other studies. Other studies have tied uh, health concerns to diet soda broadly for a number of years. They tied it broadly rather than to specific art artificial sweeteners, sweeteners. Now, the FDA has approved six 
uh, sweeteners for the use of uh, sweetening foods and drinks. Like Pace's study, they could not show whether diet soda drinks were the blame of the health concern. So in that case, the stroke or the heart attack. In 2014, a study reported that overweight and obese people who drank diet sodas ate between 90 and 200 more calories of food per day than those who drank regular soda. Also in 2014, a review of several studies published in the British Journal of Nutrition revealed that people who drank diet sodas raised their risk of type 2 diabetes by about 13%. For each 12-ounce can that they drank each day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Here's an offer we thought you'd be interested in. Are you looking to develop and create stunning coursework? Uh, Launch your stunning academy website in a snap. You can choose from among 50-plus designer-made, ready-to-go, industry-specific site templates to launch your website fast and with confidence. It's very simple, very powerful. They're flexible courses. You can wave goodbye to dull educational content. There are countless ways to package and distribute your learning content. Create listed or private courses that can be paid or free courses, or you can drip feed your content to build and to nurture your audience the way that you want. You can create compelling and interactive courses, leverage the most rich library of learning activities, and undoubtedly the most customizable course player in the market to build flexible learning experiences to keep your listeners engaged. And lastly, be the boss of your content and design your final course product exactly as you envision it. Preview it as you build it in real time. Get it up and running fast than you ever have imagined. Why don't you go down the show notes, guys, today and uh, click on Learns World. If you're interested in building courses that matter, you can monetize, create memberships, create courses, and create passive income for yourself. So support our sponsor, Learns World. Two thousand fifteen. BMC review of studies also found that and that is the British Journal um, of Nutrition, found that a single daily serving of diet soda boosted the chance of diabetes by 8%. In 2012, a study found that daily drinkers of diet soda who were on average 69 years old had a 43% higher chance of a heart attack or of a stroke or simply dying as a result of blood vessel problems, 43% chance higher. There were Israeli researchers who studied 381 adults as well without diabetes, uh, showed that diet soda drinkers had many things that raised their odds of having type 2 diabetes, including higher weight and belly fat, higher levels of blood sugars, and more glucose intolerance. You develop, just as a segue, you develop type 2 diabetes by developing glucose intolerance, meaning the sugar that is in your blood that should be getting into your cells uh, cannot get into the cells and it passes out of your system and it leaves you uh, with some level of deficiency as it relates to energy, i.e. sugar into your cells. Now, the Israelis 2014 study suggested a cause. What was that cause? Artificial sweeteners affected gut bacteria, which in turn affected their metabolism. But that connection was only noted uh, in mice, not in people. So the authors of these studies suggest many explanations for the links between the diet soda and the health concerns. In addition to potentially changing gut bacteria, artificial sweeteners may stimulate the appetite, which could lead to overeating. Let me just like stick this note in here because I know uh, this audience is an intellectual one and you guys do quite a bit of reading and studying uh, on your own. Uh, But let's just make, you know, let's just let's just bring some things to light that we all are aware of. Number one, uh, folks who are selling us fast food and snacks and soda uh, have a large research team, a scientific department. And what do these folks do? Number one. 
my hope is that they're ensuring that the products that they give to us are not going to hurt us. But in addition to that, I think the large part of what they do is ensure that we want to continue to come back and buy that product. And whether it's malicious or not, whether the intent is there or not, and I believe the intent is fully there, these researchers, these scientists, these developers of these products are engineering these products in a way that makes our body crave it. Just, there's no uh, secret that people crave McDonald's french fries, that they crave the more you drink soda, the more you want to drink it. So your question has got to be, what is it about this chemical that I continue to put in my body that tricks my body into believing on some level I'm quenching quenching my thirst, but on another level, I could drink another one, like immediately. Okay, so there is some research that has been done. There's some science behind all of this where these artificial sweeteners are tricking your body into believing that you need more of it and more of it and more of it. And of course, you go out and you buy more. And you, every time you stop at the gas station or each week on your grocery list, you got to get your six pack, your 12 pack or whatever of your diet Pepsi or your Pepsi Zero or whatever, because you just got to have it. And after a while, you know, you're either on the caffeine or you're on the aspartame or you're on whatever it is, but you're buying that product. OK, and we just need to be aware of that as informed consumers admit it and know it that companies are not only marketing to us because they want us to buy that product on a regular basis, but the product itself is designed in a way that keeps our bodies craving it. Try Lay's potato chip. I bet you can't eat just one. I bet you can't either because it's been designed so salty and so full of chemicals that it is um, promoting uh, a desire within your body that you want to have more Pringles the same way Pringles are the same way. All right. So back to the, back to the research. Um, so in other words, uh, these studies uh, draw conclusions, but not definitive conclusions to these sweeteners. The most important thing to bring from this is that you could increase your risk of dementia and stroke. You could in- increase your risk of putting on weight This is counterproductive. Many people who go to diet drinks believe that they are drinking a healthier version of that product. I won't get the Mountain Dew. I'll get the diet Mountain Dew. That way I can stick to my diet. Why? We believe, we believe, the consumer believes it has less calories. That is true. The problem is with the aspartame and the sweeteners that are so addictive, you're going to end up drinking more. And it's going to promote a desire of your body to have more sweet things in it, meaning you'll overeat. The study from 2014 that said, hey, these people gained more weight. They became obese because the soda uh, uh, inspired them to eat 90 and 200 more calories a day food-wise. They, they became more hungry. Okay? And, of course, with the glucose intolerance, you're at risk of uh, developing type 2 diabetes, which is a complete uh, medical emergency in and of itself here in the West. Uh, it is so common. It is so common uh, for folks to have type 2 diabetes that it's, it's, it's really sad because people just assume that's part of them aging or I, I, I don't know what people assume, but because there's medicine for it, people don't seem to be bothered. But you eat your way into type 2 diabetes. OK, not a doctor. I've done enough research to know that your diet primarily is why you have type two diabetes, your diet. OK. All right. So uh, there's a, uh, a doctor, David Ludwig. He says that studies like the ones we just talked about raise important concerns about diet soft drinks, but they are not proof that we need to be worried. Quote, we need more clinical trials. Uh, Dr. Ludwig is a endocrinologist and a professor of nutrition at Harvard. Uh, Dr. Ludwig conducted a test in 2012. In it, it randomly divided 224 overweight or obese teens into two groups. So the first group, one group uh, continued their diet, their normal habit of drinking sugary sodas. The other group switched to a diet soda. After a year, the diet soda group had dropped a little bit of weight, just a little compared with those who drank the regular sodas. By year two, 
However, the uh, second group was about the same. The two groups weighed about the same after two years. So in another, cl in another clinical trial, participants who drank diet soda lost about five pounds more than water drinkers over a 12-week period. Again, another clinical trial, participants who drank diet soda lost about five pounds more than water drinkers over a 12-week period. However, the study was funded by American Beverage Association. This is a group of folks that represent soda makers. You ever heard these numbers or uh, when you were a kid, did anybody ever tell you or you hear on TV that you need to drink, you know, a glass of milk a day? Who do you think is behind that marketing? Right now, if you go to the uh, USDA site, United States uh, Dairy Association, or you go to um, the FDA, a lot of these sites that are are promoting diet regimens, you know, healthy proteins, things you need to eat, you'll find that there's a litany of meat products. There's a litany of milk uh, and things that really are not good for you. But through the United States government, they're saying this is what we suggest you do. Here's here's a here's an outline of a suggested diet plan that if you want to be healthy, we're suggesting that you follow this. Who do you think is marketing that? Who do you think is creating that website? Big dairy and big beef. Folks who have big money and lobbyists and have gotten into the system to the point where they are promoting their products through the uh, United States uh, websites. Now, if you don't believe that, uh, you can study and show yourself approved. Uh, there are a number of documentaries out there that uh, have done undercover research to go and talk to some of these groups. And there is a clear, very clear uh, plan that is to sell more meat and that is to sell more milk and dairy. So ask groups like uh, um, Impossible Burger, ask groups like Beyond Meat, how difficult it was to just get in to a, to a store, to get, in, to get their products on anyone's shelf. Ask them the, the amount of um, pushback they received in terms of legislation and other groups from Big Beef. This was a big concern of Big Beef. They want to continue to sell beef. They don't want an alternative. They don't want plant-based options that are healthier for people. Well, technically, they're supposed to be healthy, but uh, that's, that's for another podcast. But the bottom line is this. You have to take responsibility for uh, understanding and weeding through all this information. Why? Because your health is important. Why? Because no one is going to offer you the simple truth if there is money to be made or lost. I'm not going to go to the American Beverage Association and ask them, is soda healthy? Of course they're going to tell me it's healthy. Why? Because they, there's a monetary benefit of them selling it to me as a consumer. They're not going to publish a study that does not look good for diet soda. Why? It's going to impact their revenue. As a consumer, you need to be informed. I don't care what the uh, website from USDA uh, or, 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 or whoever says I should eat. My diet is based on my research. Okay. All right. So why your diet soda may actually derail your diet. <laughs> I've sort of alluded to this already. Well, one of the possible explanations for the link between diet sodas and weight gain and, of course, diabetes risk is this. The sweeteners. The sweeteners. Specifically, aspartame. The sweeteners in diet soft drinks may trick you into overcompensating or eating a greater number of calories than you normally would. This is according to Christopher Gardner. He's also a PhD. Uh, Director of Nutrition Studies at Stanford Prevention Research Center. 
This can happen in one of two ways. The first way he says is psychological. Of course, you think you're doing something good by doing the diet soda. So the 240 calories or the 180 calories that was in the regular Mountain Dew or the regular Pepsi or the regular Coke, you say, I can take those 200 calories and I can eat my burger, my Big Mac or, or whatever it is that you're trying to eat and you can, you're can you counting calories. So you say, okay, this is zero and I've got 200 calories to spare. Well, not really the case. Not really the case. So it's psychological. If you choose a no calorie diet soda over a regular soda, you may reward yourself later with a treat thinking you got calories to count. And that treat may have more calories than you say by avoiding the sugary soft drink to begin with. Your brain chemistry may play a role as well. The sweetness in the diet soda may prime your brain to expect a calorie boost. When no calories are on the way, that could trigger your appetite and lead you to eat more. Your body's thinking, oh, here comes some calories, here comes some energy, and bam, nothing. So now your brain says, hey, there's a f- the false alarm. We need to get more. And so you go off and you start eating more. Go back to the 2014 study uh, that showed folks eating 90 to 200 calories more per day because of that. He says diet sodas may help you with weight loss in the beginning if you don't overcompensate, but that's a big if. That's a big if. Ludwig suggests that drinking artificially sweetened, uh, sweetened beverages may affect your taste buds as well in ways that make you less likely to choose healthy foods. Quote, you may find fruit less appealing because it's less sweet than your soda. And vegetables may become inedible, he speculates, because it's not sweet enough. I did a little research on one of the sweeteners that uh, draws most of the, I'm going to break away from that article and I'm going to give you a little bit more information. One of the sweeteners, for example, that's in, uh, I think it's called Pepsi Zero. Or Pep- I know it's a Coke Zero, but I think it's Pepsi Whatever the zero calorie Pepsi drink is, yeah, I know that aspartame is is in it. So the question is, what is aspartame? Aspartame is a low calorie sweetener. It's a substance that tastes sweet, of course, but doesn't contain natural sugars or any calories if it's used in small amounts. It was developed in 1965 and it has been widely tested by both government funded and independent laboratories. Right now, you can find it in thousands of food items all around the world. This is yogurt. This is soda. This is anything that you can think of almost. Uh, Chemically speaking, aspartame is quite simple. It's made of two naturally occurring amino acids. One is aspiric acid and the other is phenylalanilin. It looks like a fine white powder and it's almost 200 times, get this, It's almost 200 times sweeter than sucrose, otherwise known as sugar. Now, while it is not actually completely free of calories, the amounts of aspartame needed to sweeten food and drinks to the same level as table sugar are very small, and they do not add any caloric count uh, to to the bottom line. So that's aspartame. But aspartame has been drawn uh, and tied to diabetes. And many independent groups have wondered about its safety. Uh, The links between aspartame consumption and cancer, for example, in non-human primates or even in human beings has been a uh, source of uh, controversy or, or sticking point between these groups. And while there's no Uh, data to support either way, uh, many believe that uh, this sweetener uh, is, you know, it's actually tied to cancer, uh, dementia, and uh, folks becoming glucose intolerant and having issues with type 2 diabetes, uh, aspartame. So when you're drinking your diet soda, like I said, if you're brave enough to turn it around to the back and take a look to see what's there, I guarantee you, for the most part, you're going to find this this, this ingredient. Uh, and at the base of it all, you know, to get a little deeper, uh, these are, there's a lot of chemicals in, in these sodas. There's a lot of chemicals. 
and you're putting the chemicals into your body. So I don't know if a study is necessary. I just think some level of intelligence. Is a study necessary for, for to, to, to explain to you that a product that is found in, in uh, yawn, uh, lawn, lawn fertilizers should not be consumed? I'm not suggesting aspartame is found in lawn, but if you go through those uh, ingredients, you, you'll, you'll, you'll see many different things that are found in multiple products. F- for example, if you eat Chick-fil-A, why, why is there aluminum in Chick-fil-A sandwiches? Like, literally, why? All right. So, um, also, we ran across another article. Uh, it's from Penn Medicine. And they talk about uh, soda in general, but diet soda specifically, and why uh, it's not good for you. We always like to cross-reference our information to ensure that we're on the right path. Uh, there are a number of similarities in this article, of course, type 2 diabetes, heart problems, strokes, and things like that. And we're going to put this on our Facebook page so that you can read it at your leisure. I want you to to be able to make a decision for yourself. <clears throat> Artificial sweeteners are not going to uh, kill you today, okay? Uh, neither is type 2 diabetes. Uh, but at some point, it will create uh, some sort of illness in your, in your body. And that's the, the message uh, today. Of the research I've done and all the articles that I've read and the studies that we've gone through, and I'm not, this is just not my opinion. I've given you actual surveys, actual studies that were done. Uh, there, there are links between diet sodas and associated weight gain, insulin confusion, just plain uh, brain reaction to the sweetness because it is so sweet and your body is being food. It's looking for calories and it's not getting calories. It's causing you to be um, hungry longer meaning you're going to eat further into the day and you're going to gain weight. It's counterproductive. Uh, but with the marketing, and, and here's the other thing, with the marketing and with the taste of these products, that's what gets us. Because no one would argue with bacon not being a, car, a, a carcinogen if it didn't taste good. But bacon tastes good, tastes great. That's why people don't want to believe that it's not good for you. So if the sodas tasted terrible, it'd be no problem. People have, don't have a problem. But the problem is it tastes really good. And now you've gotten addicted. And you've had your Pepsi, and your Coke every morning for the last God knows how long. And you think, man, I don't think I could give it up. My body's craving it. And you're right. Your body is literally craving it. And you probably couldn't give it up if you wanted to. So in that vein... Doesn't that alarm you that your body is dependent upon some sort of product? Doesn't that seem odd to you? I absolutely love mushrooms, but I'm not dependent upon them because they're a natural product. There's no preservative. There there are no artificial sweeteners. We're eating so much, uh, so many things, uh, quite honestly, that we should not be. And we're doing damage to ourselves. And um, the reason why we do podcasts like this, uh, health and wellness, we we want to bring your attention to this uh, because on some level you already know. We want to draw a clearer line to it so you can make a better decision the next time. Why? Because we want you to be healthy longer. Why? Because you can bring so much value to your family, to next generation of young people who will be sharing this planet with for a while to share information with them. I saw a video from a guy who's vegan and uh, he said, you know what? People ask me, why do I want to be a vegan or why am I a vegan? He was very clear. He said, I, I am a vegan because, you know, I don't agree with animal cruelty and I want to be great, you know, good to the planet. And I want to put the best foods in my body. Yes, all that is true. But on top of that, I owe it to my grandkids to be able to provide them with information that otherwise they wouldn't get from me. 
because especially in the African, African American community, so many times grandparents are not hanging around for the grandkids. And there's so much information, wealth, knowledge that can be passed along that is going directly into the grave because of our fried chicken and our soul food diets that we're so um, that, that we're so connected to. Don't you want to be around to be able to uh, uh, give that wealth of intellectual uh, knowledge to your grandkids and even great can, great, great grandkids? And, and so when you think about what you're putting into your body, think about am I prioritizing myself? Is this the best decision for me? Um, listen, I still know people who who smoke and 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 vape and these sorts of things. You say, don't you want to feel your best? Don't you want to operate at the highest levels of efficiency and things like that? Uh, so I'm encouraging you to uh, go to our Facebook page, look through some of these studies. And number one, just validate what I'm telling you. Don't believe anything anyone tells you. I've told you that since day one. I do the research and I'm not going to lead you astray. But you don't know that. Go, double check, make sure I'm telling you what I'm telling you is right. And then make your decision based on that. Because listen, if you don't feel well, if you have chronic headaches or chronic inflammation, or if you have a stroke, or if you get into early dementia, you're affecting you. You're not affecting me. You're affecting you. So this is for you. This is for you. So I hope that uh, in that vein that this has been helpful. Uh, but this is just one in many things. I think you do know that uh, much of our food uh, is, is, is grown and uh, processed on a large scale. And by the time it gets to our table, uh, we have uh, chosen, uh, like I did for many years, to, to not know the behind the scenes and how it got to Publix or Kroger or Winn-Dixie or, or Ingalls or wherever you shop. You've just chosen not to want to know. And in the interim, we've seen our loved ones come and go through illness. Uh, we've not felt good. Uh, we've had chronic, you know, pains and diseases and things like that. It's time for us to really uncover and have a serious conversation and admit that 95% of what goes on with our bodies has to do with what we put in our mouth. Okay? So, that's the plain truth today, guys. Thank you for hanging out with me today. Um, again, leave us a voicemail on our new voicemail platform. It's in the show notes. Please go there and let us know what you love about the show. As a matter of fact, give us an idea of a show topic that you'd like to hear. All right? Take this information, pass it along to someone that you know that drinks too many soda, and drink water. It's the best. Talk to you soon. That's all for today's episode of Rethink. We hope that you've enjoyed this exploration of new ideas and perspectives and found valuable insights and strategies that you can apply to your life. Remember, you are the source of your own success and fulfillment. And by embracing new ways of thinking, you can unlock your true potential and yes, create the life that you truly desire. Now, if you've enjoyed this episode, we encourage you to support the podcast by sharing it with your friends, your family members, your loved ones and associates, and even your followers on social media. Also, leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Lastly, don't forget to check out our show notes for free downloads and empowering ebooks that can help you on your journey of personal growth and empowerment. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We look forward to exploring more ideas and insights with you in the next episode of Rethink.